up straight and tall, start to let in feel more rather than less. Again, you're just trying to land. Find the parts of you that you're going to need this week. Somehow I got muted there. I'm sorry. Um, that was me. Oh, okay. Um, exhaling. <clears throat> Opening up your quiet resources. Softening the skin on your face, lips together, teeth slightly apart. Soften the inside of your mouth. Close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. Start to bring a little bit more structure. So feel your feet on the floor, <clears throat> your sitting bones. Start to gently lift your chest. Drop the skin down the back body from the base of the neck to the tailbone, like, like a silk curtain. So you're being more aware of the balance between the front and the back. And awareness of the back body softer. Shoulder blades move down, but stay separated. Increase the, the strength of your position your shape from inside to out. Let go of your day. Prepare your mind to do yoga. Repose, refill. Good, and then release and take the sternum up towards the chin, the chin down and over your sternum. A little bit more effort on the lifted sternum. Feel the breath into each nostril, into each lung. Feel each sitting bone in each foot. Raise your head up with closed eyes, open your eyes. So <clears throat> there's the quiet, 
and then there's where your body is. And on this next, I want you to lift your sternum up again and drop your chin down. But try to pay more attention to the way that your inhalation nudges and helps define the inner circumference of your rib cage. It's easier to feel like the outside, but you're, I want you to be more feeling the nudge. So you're lifting your sternum, you're dropping your chin to give your rib cage slightly more definition. But you're trying to feel the inside edge. in relationship to your sitting bones, in relationship to your feet. Make sure your inside of your mouth stays soft. Quality, not quantity. Fullness and emptiness, gentle mixed. Raise your head up with closed eyes. Open your eyes. <clears throat> so we're going to do a little bit like the class today is going to be a little bit more preparation. And then we're going to do some breathing, some pranayama. And I, as you can tell, I've already started to teach this class quieter. Right? Like so. So and and yet with with uh when you prepare for like to do some more overt breathing practices um it helps to kind of wake up the body a little bit right so when you practice if you just do straight breathing stuff you know you don't always practice before um but it helps to warm up a little bit. So kind of like some of the same old things we do, go back and forth, but move slower because this is gonna be more about the quality of your breathing in this class, right? So you're just gonna go back and forth and you're just trying to like, kind of like crack your knuckles before you play piano, which I never play piano, but you're just trying to feel more, right? And then, Take your arm up over and just try to feel your, because this part, feeling this part of your rib cage when you breathe and, and feeling the change in the intercostal muscles and then go the other way. Like, so the muscles between the ribs, right? One of the things that your asana is trying to do and then, you know, and then go back the other way. What your asana is trying to do is, is, and one of the ways it aids your breathing is, and then go back the other way, is it makes the intercostal muscles more supple. So, I mean, we don't often think about our intercostal muscles, right? But you're definitely trying to get them to be more flexible and receptive, right? And then go gently back. And forward again. So you're just trying to, <clears throat> and then come on up and through, go back again. So again, one of the challenges in, in doing really quality breathing is to have your chest more open, right? More, you know, so it receives better. <clears throat> And especially, you know, like it's one of those, and then sit in the center for a second. You know, like if I remember hearing a story from a senior Angar teacher that went around asking, traveled a lot around um, India and was going from ashram to ashram, asking them, asking the, the yogis there um, in all different types of methods, um, if you could only do one, one yoga pose, what would it be? And pretty much without fail, they all, he, he said, they hit him on the head and said, metaphorically, I think, 
pranayama stupid, right? That the breathing part, right, is actually more powerful than asana. And in a lot of ways, it's more difficult because it's quieter and more confronted, right? And especially when you start becoming too aware of your breath, it can go funny, right? So that's why a little bit of like feeling your whole body, preparing your body a little bit to try to have. And in a pranayama practice, it's like, if you get three or four really good breaths, you hit a home run. And so, and part, part of, um, part of it is to recognize you practice more overtly breathing stuff because you start to notice that quality breaths aren't very, they don't happen a lot, right? Where, where they're really, and don't confuse quantity with quality. It's like, can your mind stay stay quiet not interfere too much can the mind be an observer even though you're trying to vary do depending on how complicated the pranayama you're doing um like vary and control some of it like so one of the things that often often pranayama is translated as breath control and I had an, another yogi, very, very experienced yogi say, yeah, he thought that that was not the best translation of the word and that it's, it's removing the impediments to breathing, right? So trying to get it. And one of the impediments to breathing actually is your mind, which is one of those funny things, right? I mean, and it, it's kind of obvious, like, you know, one of the reasons people are always yawning in libraries, right? Is, is that when the mind gets really deep and reflective, you tend not to breathe as much. So when you're like, when you're reading a really good book, right? When there's a lot of input, when you're really stressed out and you've got a lot of variables in a day, you tend to hold your breath. And so the relationship, right, between like your mind getting quieter and calmer and your breath and that there's a and it turns out that your mind like will will want to will want to get involved and make your breath kind of choppy so on these next couple of breaths right i just want you to be more aware of of the exhalation as it as it so you you're focusing on the exhalation And trying to be aware of it all the way down. And, and at, to the end and let the end dissolve without it being choppy, which is really hard. As you have awareness at the very end of your exhalation, it'll often... So try to get that transition between exhalation and inhalation. It's just being slightly more aware. Good, and then just go back to normal breathing. Don't, don't fixate. So again, we're gonna go forward and back and trying to gonna stay back here for a second over your chair and try to get this more open but be gentle right you don't want to jar your body before you try to get some quality breaths but you do want it to be open right so you're just like taking time kind of making it so it feels good right figure out how to get this more open and then come through again and go forward. So this push off when you're after you're forward to come back up and go back over your chair again, that grounding sensation up from your feet, right? Push off, lift your chest, 
go slow, come on up, hit the back of the chair, right? Go up and over. And again, just hang here without, don't make this too much effort. Study the opening feeling. Good. And then take your arms behind you. And again, we're being really gentle here. So we're trying to get, bring the, so I'm grabbing the back of my wheelchair, right? And I'm just broadening across my, there's my shoulders forward, broadening, right? And then drop in my chin, but we're not like making this a strong pose. We're getting the relationship between an open chest and a drop chin. And just feeling that and then take the head back a little bit. And that's not, when my arms are behind me, I don't go back as well. And then go back forward and lift your chest. Ground the shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. And then release, right? And then again, go back over the back of your chair. Let the chest fall open. And then the grounding, come forward and feel the ground, your feet, your sitting bones, the change in the weight. Because remember, your inhalation begins farther down than you might think. Right? Remember, breath is going to be one of the things that you're both, it's both voluntary and involuntary. And that's part of what makes it so powerful. Your body will breathe without you, without your mind. It's wired for it, right? So you're just, you're just in a more grounded position, just pay more, let the exhale all the way out. And then notice from the grounding position where your inhalation begins. Not just where, but that it begins from a grounded sensation. Good, and then back up again. Right. And get the ribs open again. So this time over your head and rotate your chest open, right? Like get this open and the length, right? Good, and then go the other way and get it open and, and rotate it open. And then release, and then put your hands on your knees and ground. Like, so put your, put your hands, put, put, pull, pull, back, pull back on the knees slightly towards your hip socket. And then notice the lift in the chest and don't strain, but just feel that grounding sensation. Now I'm wondering when you're doing stuff like this, are you keeping the inside of your mouth soft? Are you keeping your jaw, your jaw and your and your temple soft? Because breathing is really powerful, actually. If you do a lot of pranayama and then release, a lot of pranayama, you end up not needing quite as much sleep. It actually stores energy. Right, and in particular, it's trying to store stuff in here, right, in this part of your rib cage. And so sit up straight and tall again, lift the chest. So this position that's in the centering of lifting your sternum and dropping your chin is actually like preparing the, the warehouse, the storehouse for energy. And this is part of why shoulder stand is, is the queen of all yoga poses, right, is because it actually prepares the the rib cage to receive the breath at deeper qualities so take your hand take your thumbs put them right in here like if you can do both at once it's it diminishing returns for me i'm gonna do one at a time but you can do both if you can balance right so i'm i'm putting my thumb and i'm pushing it into my side armpit chest 
and lifting up and rolling the shoulders back. So I'm like, literally just trying to like, like I'm pulling on my suspenders, right? And I'm trying to get it more open, right? And then really saying, like, now I gotta do the other side, like really try to get this open. So I'm getting, I'm trying to make my rib cage have more tactile input, right? And getting it open. And then I go back to the other side. And get pushed that open. And then again, and I'll go back to grounding your legs. Put your hands on your knees. And as you hit back and pull back with your knees towards your hip sockets, as your chest lifts, feel where your fingers just were, right? And get that even more lifted. And then notice your breath. Again, don't be over aware of the exhalation or anything. Just feel the inner circumference of your rib cage when you're in a more alert position with your spine. Good, and then release. Real gentle now, take your right hand outside your left leg or left hand outside your right, right hand outside your left leg. And like in and twist just a little bit, but feel where that lift was on your rib cage and let it open. And then come on back to center and go the other way. And again, getting the rib, the rib cage and the spine to be slightly more active. So it's gonna be able to be more receptive when we do more overt breathing. Good, and then come on back. Now let's try to get some length in your low back. So I'm gonna lean forward onto the table. You can lean forward on your here, but I want you to get more length in your spine, right? So all this is just trying to be preparatory make space because you're breathing a lot of times I like to think and say when I'm teaching you're breathing for the parts of your that you the parts of your body that you can't feel see that's the thing about breath is that it touches both right it actually you're breathing for the empty spaces not just where your ribs are moving and stuff you're trying to, you know, and we know that good breathing <clears throat> helps the parasympathetic nervous system. So I'm just being long in my spine and just feeling the space sitting down gently with my sitting bone, lifting my sternum and feeling the length in my spine. Good, and then come on back up, come back to neutral. I'm gonna lift up a little bit because I wanna get lighter, a sense of lightness, right? <clears throat> Keeping my chest lifted, dropping my chin. So hopefully compared to when you first centered, this feels different than when you first did it in the beginning of class. Lift your stern and drop your chin. Feel the, the just without paying too much attention to where your inhalation starts, just feel the expansion of the rib cage. And then lengthen your spine on the exhalation. So you feel the inner circumference go like this. And then when you exhale, the shoulder blades drop and your spine extends. Good, and then release this idea that you can, that you can um, breathe right into your spine and then that your spine actually can return the breath to the world. So on this next couple of breaths, I've taught this many times before, Exhale, take the inhalation. Exhale gently from as if someone's pushing forward on the inner edge of each shoulder blade. 
bottom edge, lower edge of each shoulder blade. So there's a lengthening. So the spine takes in the inhalation, it expands, but then the spine returns it on exhalation. So there are all these descriptions sometimes of like, on the inhalation, you're taking in whatever the divine energy is, right? Then there's that gentle pause before the exhalation. That's where you're appreciating. And then you return the energy in service on the exhalation. All these descriptions are just trying to get you more aware of the subtle. All right, so there's a description in Light on Pranayama by Bikisengar about like there's a, when you start your inhalation, okay, there's a grounding sensation in the very low abdomen. So, and so, so, so like the idea is that you have three diaphragms, a lower one here and then right under the collarbones, right? And there's a very gentle, if you pay attention, even when you take your next inhalation, even a normal one, there's a very gentle grounding sensation in the lower abdomen, the very low abdomen, the bottom diaphragm, right? And so like, just pay attention to the beginning of the inhalation. There's a grounding sensation that very, very gently precedes the beginning of the inhalation. Right, and so part of it, and then take a breath and release it. Part of the lifting of the sternum and dropping of the chin is actually, it creates that grounding sensation, very gentle grounding sensation right at the lower diaphragm, right? So that's like, so that's like the anchoring of your inhalation is a, is a very gentle grounding sensation right at the, at the lower diaphragm. So the way BKS Anger sometimes describes it is that imagine you have a bucket and you, know, you have a handle on a bucket that can go like swivel, right? So when you're, when you're starting your inhalation, the, 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 the handle of the bucket is over on one side at your lower abdomen, very low. And the inhalation comes up and travels up and over the bucket. Like, so, so imagine that you had, the, you had the, the, the handle in front. And as your breath comes up, right, from a grounded place, that handle of the bucket comes up and over the bucket top, right? So it's coming up, but from a grounded place. And then on the exhalation, you ground. So on this next, so it feel of very, put a band, around your very low abdomen and very gently grip it as the beginning of your inhalation. And then let the inhalation rise up like the bucket handle coming over the top of the bucket, coming up your spine. And then as you exhale and descend, down the shoulder blades, that's the, the handle of the bucket going on the other side of the bucket, right? And then it starts up again. So you're watching this movement and it's almost circular, right? So it comes up the front side, descends, down the back side when you're sitting. And then it starts again and comes up and then goes down the back side. Now the trick is to know all this, be this aware, but also feel where your feet are and your sitting bones. So I'm sitting alertly
and I'm watching this whole process, right? Now, as you're being aware of all this, are you keeping the inside of your mouth soft, your jaw soft? Are you being open? All right, and then just go back to normal breathing, right? Without so much awareness, just like come back to the world you're used to inhabiting without so much inward focus. But in a way, you're already more aware, you know, you, there is no back to normal at this point, right? There's a suppleness. That suppleness is crucial in pranayama. Remember I was talking about the, the intercostal muscles being, the muscles between your ribs being receptive, right? So now as you just pay attention to your breath again, feel the expansion of the spaces between your ribs. and then the extension of the spine. All this is going on every time you breathe. Your mind just doesn't get congruent with it. Right? So they say breathing and breath awareness calms the mind down. But it has to first figure out your mind has to start sensing so it can let it go. All right. And then just, we're going to start more of a overt, you know, try to go for a few couple of good breaths, right? So get in the position. So I want to be alert. I don't want to be like rolled forward. I don't want to be slipped on the back edge of my sitting bones, right? I want to be in a receptive alert position right that has that has structure in it so it's not like you're in a lazy boy chair right so i'm actually to get really grounded in a seat because i'm not gonna you know this action can be really too physical it can impede my breath so i'm i'm coming forward on my sitting bones a little bit and I, because I have balance issues that maybe you don't have, I'm putting my forearm on the table, right? So I'm really steady because I don't want to be unsteady. I don't want to, because pranayama, the energy of pranayama will feed whatever it's going in and out of. If you're unsteady when you're sitting and breathing really this alertly, it will enhance your unsteadiness right? It will enhance whatever it is happening, right? And so if you, if you, like, if you overdo um, pranayama practice and make it too physical, you can actually have more of a, like, an agitated, a bad pranayama practice can stick with you the whole day, right? If, if there's been too much distraction. And so get in that position, right? And I'm going to drop my chin, lift my sternum because I want my rib cage, right? To be, I wanna be grounded. I want my rib cage and my spine to be receptive. Drop your chin, lift your sternum. So it's really important that your lips together but the inside of your mouth is soft. That around the temples, the jaw, Now become, on these next few times, become more aware, pay more attention to your exhalation again. All 
Eyes closed. And on these next couple of exhalations, try to lengthen the length, the time length of the exhalation, right? So you're just adding a, stretching it out just a little bit, right? So we're introducing a little bit of control. By lengthening it, stretching out the exhalation, not worrying about the inhalation. As you lengthen the exhalation, right, maybe you can feel a slight chest lift. Keep the inside of the mouth soft, the tongue and the lower palate. And then go back to normal breathing. Of course, nothing's quite normal, but don't be trying to lengthen your exhalation. I call them recovery breaths, where you're just going back to baseline. So after your next exhalation, notice the inhalation. Pay less attention to the exhalation. Remember your chest is lifted, your chin is dropped. You're grounded. Feel that slight gripping at the very low abdomen on the beginning of the inhalation and you're lengthening it just a little bit. And then letting it wash out of you on exhalation. So now you're engaged in a slightly stretching out the inhalation. And allowing whatever exhalation comes. Now on these, go have a couple of just normal breaths now. Give yourself the time because you're, more than you know, you're gripping things in your breath. You actually do need the recovery re release. So on these next, after your next full exhalation, inhale and lengthen the inhalation just a little bit. And then exhale and lengthen the exhalation. Just a little bit. the end of the exhalation, let there be that very slight grip in the lower abdomen that begins the inhalation.
and then go back to normal breathing. Just let it be whatever it is. And then open your eyes. So on these next ones, what I want you to try to do, keeping the inside of your mouth soft, I want you to try to slightly lengthen the inhalation, slightly lengthen the exhalation, but try to make them to be as close to the equal in length. Right now, I don't know if you've now if you, any of you figured out. You know, it varies from day to day, but. Ask yourself, do you have an easier time on inhalation or exhalation? Typically, one goes a little bit easier than the other, right? And so when you're trying to equalize, right, and it's okay if you're breathing through your mouth in this too, by the way. If you try to equalize, chances are you're gonna to have to be aware and try to stay steady and smooth. And some people have a little harder time at the top of the inhalation or at the bottom of the exhalation, right? And so what you're trying to do is stay steady in that place. So here, so, so get, get calm again, get grounded. Lift the sternum a little bit. Let the exhalation go all the way out. And then start the inhalation. Lengthen it. There's that pause at the top. and then let go, exhale, return it to the world. And then steady at the bottom, slight grip of the lower abdomen. Inhale up, it rises up your spine. trying to equalize the length of the inhalation and the length of the exhalation while keeping your mouth soft, while keeping your jaw relaxed. And then at the end of the last cycle, just go back to normal breathing. Okay, and so there's a type of breath that's called Ujjayi breath where there's a slight vibration in kind of where the, where your nose drips into your throat. So you you make a, a sound, I'll, I'll, I'll exaggerate it. Right, you, can you hear me like do that? That, and don't do it that hard. Well, people over harden that part of the breath. But the sound, the quiet sound that accompanies you is part of what holds you steady. Okay, so you have an accompanying like vibration that's made slightly more overt to help you stay steady in the transitions between inhalation and exhalation. Okay, so again, and so what we're gonna do, and all this stuff is still in play, 
like you're softening inside of your mouth, you're lifting your sternum a little bit, you're dropping your chin. And now on the inhalation in particular, let there be that slightly extra vibration that keeps you company. And do it on exhalation. So for me, sometimes I think about the, the extra little vibration there, kind of like whistling in the dark. It's my companion and it's gonna keep things smooth. At any time, take a recovery breath. So as soon as you figure out your mouth is tightening or anything's getting gripped, take a recovery breath. So remember, we're trying to remove the impediments to breathing. You're not forcing stuff. So on this next inhalation with that slight little vibration, lengthen the inhalation again. As you exhale, the vibration helps you lengthen slightly the exhalation. And then two more cycles and then back to normal breathing. Now it's important at the end of, an, of so much focus on breathing that you really do Shavasana, okay? So in, in, in Shavasana, there isn't breath awareness as much. You get in a position, raise your head up, open your eyes, soften, get in a position where you're supported, right? <clears throat> and this Shavasana really matters, even more so than after you've done a whole bunch of asana, right? So find the position where you feel supported, feel symmetry, let go, close your eyes, re soften the temples, the jaw, the inside of the mouth, relax the belly to relax the throat. just feel supported. Even let go of your gums and teeth, lips together, teeth slightly apart. Hold nothing. Let yourself be supported.
Feel your breath. Thank your body. Start to bring yourself back. Slightly deeper inhalation. Slightly longer exhalation. When you're ready, open your eyes slowly. Close them. Open them again. So, part of why pranayama is actually, it's something not to be, it's to be respected it actually accesses your nervous system deeper than asana because it's so quiet, right? So after you've done a breathing practice, you don't want to go jog. You don't want to be too active. You want to let your nervous system come back to not being as exposed, right? And, and so and it's, I really, if you, if you start paying more attention to your breath in, in these more focused ways, don't do too much. Less is more in pranayama, right? And it's easy as you start to get the benefit of it. Oh, I want to do more and more. And it's like, no. Did it, was this like thumbs up if this was all kind of a hard class, right? Yeah, breathing is to be respected, right? And it opens both sides of your nervous system, right? And so it's like, and it's so easy that your mind gets, oh, I'm not doing it right. And your mind, and you start to feel an itch on your face and it wants to distract and it wants to not stay steady, right? And then you think, oh my God, I'm not able to get a real deep breath or I'm not able to, you know, and you start judging yourself. And that's why the Shavasana is so important at the beginning and at the end. So you try to just let it land, right? So not only do very few people practice on their asana at home, a lot of people, and then an even smaller percentage, practice pranayama consistently because there's something about it that's so quiet and it's kind of confrontive and it's like, and, and, and the key to that is to keep trying to show up without judgment, right? Like it's such an, and just accept it. Your mind's gotta get like narrower, calmer, as the breathing starts to come more into, into the light of consciousness, right? And, and it's just one of those things that practice even a couple of good breaths a day of pranayama practice. Doesn't have to go through all this formality that we just did, right? Couple times, like when you're first getting up, don't take, like when you're first waking up, like take a couple of breaths right? And make them a little deeper, a little more exposed, a little more grounded, right? That's enough. And then when you want to like start to practice it more, like some of these things like being more aware of your exhalation and lengthening it, a little bit more of your inhalation and lengthening it. And then as, as you, and I tend to have such a respect for pranayama that I don't do a lot of the more complicated breaths, especially not very often because I think they're so, it's already so powerful, right? And so I've, I've spent my pranayama practice in my 31 years just trying to absolutely respect and receive the simplicity of it without trying to make it do, you know, there's alternate nostrils, there's, the loma breath and there's you know like the, you break it up into 
intersections and there's all this extra control. And I've kind of spent my life trying to just drink out of the well and appreciate how wonderful it tastes, right? But there's other breathing practices and they have physiological benefits, right? So, you know, alternate nose breathing kind of helps both hemispheres of the brain. And there's some things that actually do some cool stuff. So on that note, don't go run around. Don't do handstands right now. Don't do any cartwheels. Respect the quiet. Feel it. Right? All right, hands together. Namaste. Spirit in me bows the spirit in you.